number 19 on the list has Nicola Rossi Lemeni singing the song of the flea. Vocally speaking, there are better videos with him out there, for example his Don Carlo. But this one really impressed me not only because of his interpretive power, but also because of his acting and appearance. I copied his hand-in-one-pocket pose in some of my own recitals and got positive comments every time. I've always adored Kim Borg's voice and art as an interpreter. When I studied Sibelius songs, his records were my model. I find him an outstanding basso cantante, intelligent, witty, raw. This recording of the Flea song is one of the finest I know of. <laughs> I do not like Fischer Dieskau. I do not like his voice, I do not like his way of singing, I do not like what he did to the German lead. I much prefer Schlussnus Rehkemper or the other more manly baritones who sang the same repertoire. But in Winterreise he excelled. His interpretation was spot on. His eyes are telling the story almost more than his voice does. 
he really is the wanderer. And for that, he deserves a spot on this list. Marvelous. Und mit starren Fingern dreht er, was er kann. Barfuß auf dem Eise wankt er hin und her. Und ein kleiner Tender bleibt ihm immer leer. Und sein kleiner Teller bleibt ihm immer leer. Keiner mag ihn hören, keiner. In 1935, a young Negress appeared in one of the major events of the concert season in the Belgian town Ostende. She had come from North America and was completely unknown in Europe. The audience was small, indifferent and distracted. Who was this little black girl that dared to appear in a gathering of civilized people in order to sing her spiritual songs, they asked. But then she began and suddenly the indifferent audience became all ears. This voice was magnificent. It sounded like an amalgam of a contralto, a mezzo-soprano and a soprano. What unbelievable, unexpected fusion. What a massive torrent of sound. Had there ever been a voice like hers before? The program did not only consist of spiritual songs. It also contained a few classical pieces, which were part of many a famous singer's standard repertoire. Handel's Lago, for example. The author, in fact, was to sing later that evening in another concert of the same series. He was the famous tenor everybody wanted to hear, where she had been the unknown mezzo-soprano. But after hearing her sing the Lago the way she did, he swiftly removed the piece from his own program. Whenever the author of this book is about to sing, he now thinks about the flowing sounds she produced. And of that concert in Ostende, in which an awestruck world first discovered the harmonious and powerful voice of Marian Anderson. Giacomo Lauri Mm-hmm. 
A clip that has always fascinated me is the present one featuring the Russian tenor Sergei Lemyshev. What purity of sound, what ease. The Russian school is underrated in my opinion. It produced basses that sounded like basses, baritones that sounded like baritones, and tenors that sounded like tenors. And often Russian singers kept their voices intact for many decades. In my opinion, this kind of singing is extinct. I do not know of any lyric tenor with such power, such ring, such depth and such elegant appearance while singing. Listening to him is like reading a novel by Tolstoy. Simply magnificent. Sergei Lemeshev. Сердечный друг, желанный друг, приди, приди. Speaking of magnificent, Rosanna Carteri was so good that I had a hard time to choose between her Magda and her Mimi, and that's why I want to feature both clips. Man, was she good.
Another underrated artist was Flaviano Labo, who got eclipsed by the Monaco di Stefano and Corelli. Style-wise, I prefer him to all of them. Granted, the voice wasn't as imposing as the Monaco's, he didn't have the sex appeal of Di Stefano and lacked the virility of Corelli. And yet, there is an impeccable style, and first of all a sincerity, that I don't hear in any of the others. In my opinion, he was the superior artist, Flaviano Labo.
Gyaurov was a phenomenon. This film shows him sometime in his 20s and what incredible voice this man had. It's followed by another clip much later in his career, a clip which I mainly love for its sound. There is nothing much to see, unfortunately. <laughs> Apologram Forte is one of my favorite baritones, in my opinion the best Scarpia and Iago on record. And yet he could also pull off a very convincing Figaro. It's amazing to hear such a powerful voice soar through this difficult tessitura with ease. Was there anything this man could not do? <laughs> Richard Tucker was a true singing machine. Him including this terribly difficult aria from Manolesco in a concert setting attests to it. But then he met Robert Merrill during a gala at the Met, and there he faced the final boss, so to say. In the duet from La Forza, Merrill managed to outsing the tenor, with what is to me the most beautiful E ever recorded by a baritone. And they both don't mess up the ending, which is a feat in itself. Alla che del tuo stemma, o provasi col tuo stemma, esso splende più che gemma, sangue di milletto, e la gola fai mentite, a me prendo, a me, ando, prendo, uscite, prendo,
come sorrarti, ma mi riappo non è il cuore, ti consacro al disonore. Speaking of bosses, here is Cesare Sieppi in the famous 1954 Don Giovanni. I never understood how a man can look so good, slim and elegant, and emit these juicy sounds. A perfect Don Giovanni from tip to toe, truly godlike. <laughs> Calda la testa, una che festa fa preparare, se trovi in piazza qualche ragazza, se con quella se ricaverai, se con quella se ricaverai, se ricaverai, se ricaverai, senza il culo di nella la tosia, quindi questo, la follia, mi non le manda a fare ballare qui, questo fare ballare, mi non le manda a fare ballare, la follia fare ballare, mi ha fatto dalla tua parte, con questa quella Speaking of gods, there are many good videos of Jussi Björling, most of which were recorded a bit later in his career. This includes the clips the Ed Sullivan Show has recently published on their channel, as well as this famous recording of Till Huffs from a concert in Stockholm made in the late 1950s. There is one clip, however, that I like particularly much. It comes from his 1937 film Fram för Framgång, which means something like Go for Success. There, he sings an old Swedish drinking song, live and a cappella, which ends with what must be the most beautiful, easy and ringing high B natural ever recorded on film. And what's best, it's a close-up. Number six, you see the only.
When it comes to true Verismo singing, there is no one I rank higher than Magda Olivero. She truly had it in her blood. It takes guts to go on stage and perform a piece as dramatic as Manon's last big scene in Act 4 of Manon Lescaut. Not only is it technically demanding, it also lacks the effective final bang, and most sopranos would not include such a piece to their concert routine. But as soon as Olivero steps on stage, she becomes Manon, and she creates a stunning effect. Her final Non voglio morire gives me goosebumps every time. Number 5, Magda Olivero. Our pianist is Judith Nietzsche, Stefan Zucker. Oh, <laughs> 
The number three spot goes to Leontine Price. As it is the case with Björling, there are many excellent videos of her around, and like Olivero she was capable of creating great effects with scenes that aren't really suitable for a concert setting, such as Butterfly's death. My favorite video of hers, however, is the one of her farewell performance in Aida at the Met in 1985. Not only does she sing an impeccable O Patria Mia, which is a killer aria. How many sopranos have come to grief on that infamous high C? Not Miss Price. Her last performance was excellent. This clip, however, is not so much about her excellent singing. It's about the public's and, ultimately, her own reaction to the public's appreciation. The applause would not stop, and you can see her entire career passing in front of her eyes while she tries to keep her composure. Well, until she cracks, that is. One of the most moving moments in the history of opera and film.
You might wonder why I've mounted these images in a video on singing. Well, I greatly admire those artists who kept performing in Germany with nerves of steel while the beautiful cities were bombed to ashes. I'm sure you all know Walter Giesecking's wonderful performance of Beethoven's Fifth Concerto, recorded in stereo by the Reichsrundfunk. When you listen carefully, you can hear the anti-aircraft guns in the background. The film that takes my number one spot has no gunfire, but it was recorded in Berlin sometime in 1944, and it features my favorite baritone, singing a song by Richard Strauss. As far as I know, this is his only live performance recorded on film, and it's one of the most moving documents I know. It sounds like the final farewell to a world that will never return. Thanks for watching. Ja, du weißt es, teure Seele, dass ich fern von dir mich kümmere.